Welcome back to Cutting It Close, guys. And in today's video, I want to give you a raw, honest take on my industrial size wood shop and what I don't and do like about it. Uh, to give you a little bit of background, about a year ago, we've we've moved from a 2,400 square foot shop, so roughly a 200 square meter shop, to a 9,000 square foot shop that's roughly about 840 square meters um, for all my metric fans out there. Now, this shop, all of my employees, we made ourselves. Um, I'm the oldest one that works for everybody. I'm 25. Everybody else is 25 and below that works for me, minus my parents. And this shop was built with our hands. We built everything. None of us have never been in the industrial woodworking area, anything like that. We're just really going through the school of hard knocks and trying to learn all this stuff ourselves. So I just wanted to give you an honest tour of things I'm doing in my shop and why I'm adding on an additional 3,000 square foot or 280 square meters to my back of my shop because there's a lot of things I did not anticipate whenever I built my first 9,000 square foot shop. So with that being said, take a look at the shop and let's go get a tour. Okay, so we're standing kind of by my inventory area right now of my shop. Um, I have some forklifts. I have a lot of clutter right now because we are transitioning to that bigger add-on that I'm doing. And we've also only been in here about really working in this shop about six months. Um, so everything's really kind of cluttered and I'm not happy about a lot of things in here. But soon enough, we will have a lot of things changing. And so in my next video in a couple months from now, I'm going to show you all these lean manufacturing techniques I'm implementing in this shop. And uh, really today I'm just going to walk through and show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So with that being said, we have um, some inventory. We have my forklift. We have a scooter. And a funny story about the scooter is whenever I was 16 years old, I went into an industrial um, wood distribution company. And they had scooters to get from one side of the warehouse to the other. And I decided whenever I was 16 Old, that I was going to build a shop big enough to ride a scooter in. And as weird as that sounds, the whole, that, that was such a big motivating factor for me uh, early on was building a shop big enough to ride a scooter in. And I finally have a shop big enough to ride my scooter in. So uh, that's just a uh, kind of a funny story and why I have a scooter in the shop. All right. So this is some uh, duct work that we have that we're, it's getting laid out for another machine. Um, some, some, some like industrial dust collection. Over here, we have just a lot of clutter. Um, I do not like a lot of this clutter. Um, it's not good. It's not good for anything. Um, clutter is an inefficient shop, and we have a lot of clutter. So we're very inefficient right now. Up here, uh, which you maybe may or may not be able to see, we have our office spaces. So we have 1,500 square foot or 1,400 square meters of office space, uh, second story. And here, we have where I have my laser engraver, my inventory room, and stuff like that. And then here, is something I'm very proud of. We have a gym inside here. So let's take a walk inside the gym so I can show you something I'm really proud of and really proud of my employees for utilizing inside this wood shop. All right, so I'm inside my gym right now. As you can see, we have um, pretty much everything a gym needs. We have some cable systems, treadmill. We have a bike that's kind of out of the picture. Um, and I really pro promote a lot of health and uh, wellness in my wood shop, uh, manufacturing shop, whatever you want to call it. Since we are so young, we're trying to revolutionize the wood industry and, and kind of bring it back to young people. Therefore, I need to have something that a lot of people don't think about and don't have. And first off, it's a gym inside of a wood shop because, you know, you, in order to be productive, you need to be somewhat healthy so you can maximize your potential, right? Okay, let's go out to my shop. So right now I'm standing in front of my industrial size CNC that you've probably seen in uh, multiple videos that I'm do doing. I'm actually adding another one of these and this whole area is going to be transitioned where this CNC is going to get turned and I'm adding a second one which is probably going to be about right here where I'm standing going that way. Um, that's something that I've learned is maximizing space. So as you can see in front of me, there's a lot of wasted space. 
because I have to drive my lumber through here. So whenever we do the add-on, I'm actually putting all my lumber in the back of the shop. That way we can actually bring out a CNC and have um, really optimize the space, okay? So once again, this is my CNC. We got our computer systems right here. Um, you know, we have a lot of clutter. Once again, clutter is very inefficient. Um, an unorganized shop is a unsafe and inefficient shop, and I don't like that. Over here, we have some of our um, plywood. This is actually stuff we're sending back to a distributor that we got wood from. It had some defects, had some checks in the wood, had some warpage that we didn't like. So we're actually sending that back. But yeah, this is just the general, kind of the general CNC area right now. And this computer is actually linked to all of our computers in the office. So we can program up there and actually send the program directly to our computer down here. So it's really cool, really efficient, and I do like that about this shop. Now, as you can see, it's a pretty good area. This is, um, this is a, really a jig slash template that we have set up for the CNC on a particular part we're cutting out. And so right here in this pallet, this pallet will be stacked full of parts, and we'll be running this CNC all day long and eventually running a second CNC all day long cutting out different parts. Um, this is red oak, and sometimes we do Baltic birch plywood. Sometimes we do maple, pine, just... You know, if you own a CNC, you know what I'm talking about. You can really do anything. So that's kind of what we do in this area. So let's transition to the cell that, it's called a work cell, that we do a lot of um, hardwood handling. Okay, so now we're in my hardwood processing cell. Um, this is kind of a work cell. And if you notice, uh, I'm, I'm going to point this out later, the whole flow of my shop looks kind of like a horseshoe. So it goes in a big U-shaped, and that's, that's really the sign of kind of a, a, an efficient shop. So if you ever have an industrial shop, just know you need to set it up in an efficient way. But I'm standing beside my 25-inch planer. We have a rip saw over here, um, which is pretty much an industrial table saw. Um, for those of you who don't know what a rip saw is, I'll do a video over it later. If you come back, if you notice, this area is really clean, which I'm, at least the floor space is clean, which I'm really happy about. But as you can see out of the corners of this video, there's a lot of clutter. Once again, I'll talk about the clutter in a little bit, and I, I really don't like that too much. We have my miter saw, and back here we have an upcut saw. So come over here, and I'm going to show you the, one of the biggest differences between a hobbyist shop and an industrial shop. So, you know, if you have a hobbyist wood shop and you have a miter saw, you may have a, a smaller area than this, but you know, you have your miter saw, you're going to have some scraps, right? Um, and, and, and that's kind of guns, that's pretty much how it looks. I mean, that's how my old, old shop looked. But when you start having industrial size equipment and start going through a lot of wood, this is what it can come out to. It gets, you have so much scrap. Now, this right here and this pallet is actually going to get cut up by the rip saw on Monday. Today's a Saturday. Um, so that's, that's just sitting work in progress, which is, once again, not good in a manufacturing shop. But I'm working on that. Once again, I'm young and I'm learning. But you're going to start to have a lot of scraps. Now, this looks like a crazy amount of scraps. We were so busy during October, November, and December of last year that this is just 10% waste. Um, this is going to be used and reused for other products. I just haven't made them yet. So we're actually going to store a lot of this in our other side of the shop in our add-on that we're doing and it's going to declutter a lot of this so we can have the CNC's pointing this way and whatnot. So this may look like a lot and it is a lot but it's all going to get used and we were in such a crazy rush because we just finally got in the shop and we had all these crazy orders coming in and so it just got stacked up. So this is a very bad thing in my shop that I absolutely hate but I am dealing with it. All right so let's go to the next thing. Okay, so we have a, our glue station over here. Um, we just do some glue ups, we'll scrape. This is, once again, a pile of scrap that we're going to do some rework with. Um, and I've been waiting on to get this machine I'm about to show you to be able to use this scrap. It's not scrap, once again. It's material that hasn't been utilized to make products. It's never scrap. If you're a woodworker, there's no such thing as scrap, right? But this is our glue area. And uh, let me show you my brand new machine that we're waiting to get installed. It's going to get installed in two days, and I'm super excited about it. And this is a three-head wide belt sander that I have. And yes, I started with a 16-inch drum sander three years ago. I started with 
you know, the, a five hundred dollar uh, drum sander that I picked up off of uh, online for real cheap, and now I have this three years later. So it is possible, guys. But this is my uh, three head wide belt sander that has not been hooked up yet. But I just got it in the other day, and I'm super excited. So, uh, with that being said, this is my three head wide belt sander. It is huge. It is absolutely huge, and I'm super excited for it. It's very expensive, and it takes up a lot of air. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, uh, anyways, I'm, I'm too excited for it. It's going to get installed in two days, and in the next updated video of this shop, we'll actually get to see it working and running and everything else. So, let's go now to my sanding area. So this is my sanding area right across is where my CNC machine's at, where both of my CNC's are going to be. And so from the CNC, it usually comes over to the sanding area where we router and sand, and it just literally follows this circle and then comes out the other side. So it's a very efficient setup on the sanding area. Nothing special yet. We have some new um, machines that are coming in here that are going to help us sand a little, I say new handheld machines that are going to help us sand more efficiently. As you can see, there's a lot of clutter, a lot of products sitting there that does not need to sit out. And that's something bad in this shop that we have. It's called rework. Um, so a lot of it, or some of this is rework that we have. Some of it is work in progress inventory that we have. None of it is good to really be sitting out. So that's something I'm looking to fix in this shop. Um, and yeah, it's just a big work in progress. I mean, we've only been in here a little bit and I'm learning as we go. But yeah, this is our sanding area. It's really cool. The products just flow through just like this. And when they're done, they come out right on this other side and go into our inventory room. So it's pretty simple. Let's go check out the last thing. This is our, um, this is where, this is our standing table. So, yep, we're not fancy yet. This is just where we stain and dip some items at. So you may be familiar with that yourself. And then here's our drying room. So we have a dehumidifier in there and we dry our products in there and it keeps them nice, clean, and fresh. <laughs> All right, let's go. And last but not least, this is where it all started. So I have another one of these and in my other CNC at my old shop. Currently it's only about, it's only a little ways down the road. But this is where it all started. It all started with my CNC and within five years, a CNC like this has helped me produce enough revenue and enough income to build a shop like what you just seen. And it, it's super mind-boggling crazy how just two years ago I'm working in a horse barn, or a year ago I'm working in a horse barn uh, where, where my old shop was at, and now we're here because of this machine. So when I talk about CNC, te CNC technology and everything it can do, it's possible, and I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm 25 years old. We built this whole entire shop. I'm super proud of all my guys, super proud of everything we've done. But the cool thing is it's only just the beginning. So I hope this is a very raw look at my shop, and you got to see some things that maybe you never thought about, or you can kind of analyze your business and see you know, what you need to do differently or things you need to expect. And that's what I, that, that was the point of this video. So once again, I hope you started or you ended this video with more knowledge than what you started it with. And as always, please leave the comments in the comment sections below that if, if you want to see any other videos. And with that being said, just remember, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.